Okay, so our um, objective for today is to be able to sketch quadratic and cubic functions using paragraphs and end behavior. And I'm not actually going to use the term end behavior today, but we're going to um, we're going to talk about it. I just probably am not going to use that word until tomorrow. And then we're going to describe the transformations in words as we graph them. Okay, so before we get to our discovery activity, I'm curious, what is the graph of something like y equals 3? What does that look like? Vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. So that would just be a line like that. Okay, now we can keep building up our functions. What about y equals x plus 3? What's that? A slanted line? Something like that? Okay. Yeah. What if I keep building up, what about x squared? Parabola, right? Plus 3 would just shift it up. Okay. What about, oh, something I always forget. What about absolute value of x? Oh, that's a parent graph. What's the parent graph look like? These are all parent graphs. I it's a v, yeah. This is the parent graph for this function. This is the parent graph for this one. Yeah. So what's the parent graph for x cubed? A circle? A cube? We're going to discover it. Ooh, Tristan, I think he knows. Okay. It is going to be some kind of curve. It's going to look kind of like another letter of the alphabet. And we're also going to look at something like that, too. That's going to look like another letter of the alphabet. Okay. <clears throat> you guys know you call this a parabola because it's a quadratic function, right? What is this called? Linear. Do you guys hear what I called this one? The x third? This one's cubic. Someone has a cheat sheet in front of her. It's not a cheat sheet. They don't have that yet. That got left over from last period. This one, it is linear, but it has another name. Anyone know? It's a line. It is linear, but it's more, there's a more specific name for it. It's a constant function because it doesn't change, right? There's no variable to change each for each point. Okay, and then we're going to see that this one's called x to the fourth quartic. quartic. Yep. Okay, so we're going to discover those shapes. So you have a piece of paper in front of you, or it should be at your desk somewhere. It looks kind of like this. Um, for the sake of time, we're going to skip the linear. We already said that when we have y equals x, it's just going to be a line. Not going to worry about that. We're going to skip the x squared one as well. We already said that's going to be a problem. Don't worry about that. We're going to go to the x to the third, and on the back there's a negative x to the third. So I need you guys to fold it for me so that you can see both. So can you each take one of the pieces of paper? Can you hold it so that it has name at the top? And then I'm just going to have you fold, so watch mine really quick. So your name's at the top. You're going to take this edge and fold it over so you can see two. I know one's upside down. We'll just flip it. Okay. So we're going to start with the x to the third. Yeah, one of them looks like So Philip, hold it like this. See where it says name at the top? Okay. Fold this side over. All right. So if we're looking at x to the third, we're going to substitute in x values of 0, 1, 2, 3. And negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay? So I'm going to help you on a couple of these, and then I'm going to leave the rest to you, and you're going to graph it and see if you can find the shape. So, this is just a bit of notation. If we have 0, for example, I'm just going to bring this straight down. 
I'm going to erase this line in a second, so don't copy the line. I'm substituting in 0 for x. And that means, and I always, always use parentheses when you're substituting, just to be careful, in case you have negatives. I'm doing 0 cubed. 0 times 0 times 0. I'll graph that in a second. I'm going to skip the ones. I'm just going to do the 2 and the negative 2 and then let you do the rest. So if I was to do 2 now, we're doing h of 2. All it's saying is take h function, substitute 2 in. <coughs> and so we're going to take 2 cubed. 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 8. And then if I come up here, I'm substituting in a negative 2. Is that any different than substituting in a regular 2, a positive 2? Let's see. We do negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Positive 4 times negative 2 would be negative 8. Okay, so I'm going to graph these three points with you. So one point is 0, 0. Not at the origin. Positive 2, positive 8. Go over 2. Up 8. And it turns out these thicker lines, they count by 4s. So I can go up to 8. Negative 2, negative 8. And I'm going to leave it to you to now do 1, negative 1, 3, and negative 3. And 1. Okay, so now you've had time to um, find the other values. So for negative 3, when you substitute that in, you should have ended up with negative 27. So negative 3, negative 27 doesn't really fit on our graph. Negative 1 gives you negative 1. Positive 1 gives you positive 1. And positive 3 gives you positive 27, which doesn't fit on the graph either. So if I'm looking to sketch, when you go past just x in an equation, it's going to be curved, no matter what. So because x squared is a u, x cubed is still going to be a curve. So don't try to connect these points with like a straight line. It's always going to be some kind of curved, um, curved stretch. So just do your best to connect the points with a curve. And I know I said it looks like a letter. It kind of looks like a really stretched out S, kind of sideways. An N, I guess it looks more like that maybe. <coughs> Okay, so, so far, let's recap what we've done. So far, we know that x squared looks like this. We know that negative x squared looks like this, right? Okay, we just figured out that x cubed, a cubic function, looks kind of like that. You have guesses as to what negative x cubed might look like. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. Flip, I heard. So here's negative x cubed. I'm going to do three of them with you again, and then give you a little time to finish the rest. Okay, so I'm going to do, we're going to use the same values. Ne uh, which way did I write these? One, two, three. Negative one, negative two, negative three. So if I substitute in zero, h of zero would be negative zero cubed. That's zero again. It's going to go through our origin. Okay, I'll do two. H of two. Now here's where we have to be really careful with the negative sign. The equation says there's a negative in there. Negative, and then our substitution of 2 cubed. So 
the negative is not being cubed. Only the 2 is being cubed. So that's 2 times 2 times 2, 8. But the negative is still there. So it's going to be negative 8. So when I go to graph that, 2 negative 8. If I do negative 2, we'll do h of negative 2, which is going to be the negative out in front still, negative 2 cubed. So that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8. And the negative is still there from the original equation. So it's a negative, negative 8, positive. So negative 2, positive 8. Okay. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to fill in the remaining value. Okay, so now that you've had time to fill in these values, negative 3 came out to be uh, positive 27, negative 1 is positive 1. So if we graph those, negative 1. Positive 1. Positive 1 came out to be negative 1. And then 3 is negative 27. So our sketch is what you guys predicted. It's the reflection or the flip of the positive curve that we had on the last one. Okay. So now we're going to turn to our note. And I just gave you a handout that looks like this, right? And we're going to um, make quite a few notes on this. Um, we're going to use all these parent graphs to help us do some translations and some graphing today. So, if you could grab your notebook and Okay. There is your title, and I need you to glue this into your notebook. Okay, if you don't have your notebook, you can just um, take out another piece of paper. We're going to write a couple other things down. The first piece of information I think we need to write down is I'd like to label the variables that go with each graph. So this first one, this is just a constant function. We looked at that um, already. That's just going to be a number. It's not very mathematical, but I'm going to write the number symbol. And then for this, we know it's just an x. For a quadratic, we know it's x squared. Cubic, x cubed. Quartic, x to the fourth. Quintic, x to the fifth. All right, now there's something really cool about the exponent. So the exponent with these um, is called the degree. So this has a degree of 2, this has a degree of 3, degree of 4, and so on. Those also tell you how many zeros. So we all know that parabola has two zeros, typically. Look at the cubic function. How many times does it cross the x-axis? Three times. Look at the quartic function. One, two, three, crosses it four times, four zeros. And the fifth one crosses it five times. We're going to use that a lot to graph tomorrow, in tomorrow's lesson. Kind of cool, huh? Okay, the next thing we need to know, I'd like you um, to either circle or highlight the odd degree. So degree one, degree three, degree five. There's something special about these. Special? Yes. <laughs> they do. 
Someone already discovered why I had you highlight these. Okay. Look at how they start and finish. Where does this one start? Like negative infinity, right? And look where it finishes. Goes up to positive infinity. So do does the qu quadratic one do that? No, that one starts at positive infinity and ends at positive infinity. This odd degree of three starts at negative infinity, adds at positive, ends at positive infinity. And same thing for the fifth degree. So that's what's special about odd degrees. The last thing we're going to note, I think we need to draw the parent graph of um, the reflection, so anything with a negative. So if this had been a negative x, the line would be going down to the right. If this x squared had been a negative x squared, it'd be opening down. If this was negative x cubed, it would finish down below. Negative x to the fourth would look kind of like the letter M. We're not going to do very much drawing of anything to the fifth power because usually we've used like a graphing calculator just because it's a little difficult. But you don't have to draw this one if you don't want to. Look something kind of like that. All right, and then there's just three um, little notes I want to make down below. So one is I want to define the word degree for you for our purposes for right now, because we're only going to be dealing with x's and y's and we're not going to be multiplying x's and y's. Um, we're just going to say it's the highest exponent in the function. So for example, we could graph something like that. So we're going to graph that eventually. But we could say it has degree 3 because that's the highest exponent of all the exponents there. And it also tells us how many zeros. And then we're just going to write down what we know about odd degree functions and even degree functions. So odd degrees start and end in different directions. They could start either at positive or negative infinity and end at either positive or negative infinity.
Okay, now that we've done our dance moves, we're going to use what we know about where graphs start and end, right? Their end behavior and their shape. Did I say graph? And we're going to get some. So I'm going to start with these. All right, I'd like you to watch me, right? Don't write any of this down, okay? It goes pretty quick. So if I wanted to sketch this graph, the first thing I'm going to look at is the exponent. It's a cube. So I, in my head, have to think about the shape. I know it's going to be a curve. X cubed is usually something like that. But it's negative. So I've got to flip it. So it's going to look something kind of like that. Now I just need to know, like, where do I start? So I'm going to put this in transformational form. I'm going to move the 3 to the other side. Y minus 3 equals negative X plus 5 quantity cubed. Okay, it's kind of like finding a vertex. We have negative 5 as our x value, positive 3 as our y value. So we're going to start this graph at negative 5, 3. And then, because we're just sketching, we're not actually graphing, we're going to sketch this shape through this point. And that's the graph. That's it. Not bad, right? For today, they're not going to be very accurate. Tomorrow will be more accurate. Okay? Let me do one more. Okay. This one, I notice, is an x squared. So I know it's a parabola, but it's a negative, so it's going to be opening down. I'm going to move the 8 to the other side. We have our starting point. In this case, the point we're going to use is actually the vertex, negative 1, 8. And we already said it's going to open down. We're not going to worry too much about being accurate, just drawing the shape of it. Okay? You guys ready to try one on your whiteboards? Yes. Yeah. Whiteboard. You're going to need to graph this, guys, so you need your graph. Okay, so if I was going to graph this, my x value would be at 1, y value at negative 5. So I'd go over 1, down 5. My parent graph is going to go through that point. It's an x cubed. It's going to finish in the positive infinity direction because there's no negative coefficient. Ready to try one more? Let's do y equals negative x plus 2 to the third power. So let's go over this one. If we are finding our point we're going to cross through, we'll be at negative 2, 0. So that's going to shift us over 2 on the x-axis. Okay? And then our shape is negative, so it's going to finish in negative infinity. That's the whole big idea today, right? If it's negative, it's going to finish in the negative. So something kind of, ooh, my pen skipped. Something kind of like that. Okay, let me see them. Thumbs up, thumb down, thumb in the middle. How are we feeling on this? Question? Well, so the question is, do we have to distribute the negative? We could, but in PEMDAS or any Gemma or whatever you use, exponents always come first before multiplication, right? So you would have to do the exponent first and then the multiplication. So if you wanted to, you could expand this to that, and then you'd have to, like, you'd have to multiply it all out and then do the negative, okay? Which we could, we might get to that later on, but we're not going to go that far right now. Okay, so it looks like we're ready to start homework. I'll come around and help those of you who are, who didn't have a thumbs up. Um, 
and then that's pretty much it for today. So, what are two really big ideas we need to know? What's the first thing you need to know? This shape. What's the second thing you need to know? Negative or positive. Yeah. You need to know your first point. Good. Those are kind of the three things you need to know. Okay.